Like a lot of ethnic groups that first immigrated into California from other countries, the Italians first arrived in San Francisco and surrounding areas before coming down to San Diego. The Italians especially wanted to go to this area because it was similar to their homeland. A bunch of Italians came to California in the early 1900s. From 1900 to 1910, the number of Italians in California pretty much tripled from 22,000 to 67,000. The San Diego Union reported on the arrival of the first few Italians into San Diego in 1871, but there weren't really a bunch of them that came until 1906, because that's when the San Francisco earthquakes happened and all the Italians got out of there. Most Italians that came to San Diego settled in a place called the Middletown, which was later referred to as the Italian Colony, even later referred to as Little Italy. Little Italy was chosen as the ideal place for Italians because many of them were fishermen, and Little Italy at the time bordered the harbor, so Little Italy in its origins was a fishing village. Of all the ethnic communities and neighborhoods in San Diego that I've heard of, this one seems to be the most cohesive. The Italians formed a very tight-knit community, some people referring to it as a cocoon. The community was drawn together by a lot of things, like their determination to work hard, their language, and perhaps most of all, their religion. For the most part, they were all Catholic, and they all worshipped at the Mother of Our Rosary Church. This place was really the heart of Little Italy, the place that drew an already tight community even closer together. Peter Corona, who was a guy who grew up in the area, referred to it as different from other Little Italys in the United States. He said that the Italians in Little Italy, quote, lived in a more confined geographical area, stayed mostly within that area, and rarely associated with people who were non-Italian. It was a very sort of traditional community, if you will. Like, boys were expected to follow in their father's footsteps, especially in the tuna industry. And it's one of those things where if something happened in the neighborhood, probably everyone heard about it. Just a quick side note, I've mentioned fishing and fishermen in the tuna industry several times already, and if you want to know about the fishing industry in San Diego, I've made a separate video about it, which you can watch by clicking here. So Italians who weren't fishermen were usually either factory workers or or small business entrepreneurs. A lot of them had to start small businesses to keep their families afloat, like even children would go around collecting metals to sell to the local junk man. The people of Little Italy lived very sheltered lives, like that Peter Corona guy I discussed earlier talked about the mafia and how it was so taboo in Little Italy. The word mafia was never spoken, like it was kind of this unsaid thing in Little Italy that saying mafia was sometimes even worse than using curse words. This is probably because the mafia gave the Italians a reputation they did not necessarily want, so they were sheltered from this thing that was often in their own backyard. Like, there was this guy called Frank Bompassero who became a hitman for the Italian Mafia and grew up in Little Italy. That's pretty cool. Like, right in the middle of an American city, there was a space of a couple blocks that was, like, its own country, kind of. So the question is, what happened? How did Little Italy go from a place that was, like, actually Little Italy to a place to get gelato? Well, the start of the construction of Interstate 5 was the beginning of the end. They began construction on the interstate in the early 1970s, and I'd imagine by this time the community had kind of started to dissipate a bit. After 60 years, the children of the original immigrants probably started to assimilate into American culture a bit. But that's kind of irrelevant, because in the early 1970s, Interstate 5 was constructed and 35% of Little Italy was destroyed. So that, coupled with the fact that the tuna industry was declining, kind of sent the neighborhood into a tailspin. All the Italians probably just left, leaving behind what was once a cocoon, now just a shriveled shell of what once was. So the neighborhood continued to decline for a while, and it eventually became like Chinatown is today. I neighborhood that isn't really anything, a neighborhood that's just another part of downtown. That is, until the Little Italy Association got a bunch of money from the city and turned Little Italy from an unrecognized random neighborhood to the thriving community we all know today. So yeah, that's the story arc of Little Italy. It went from a place where all Italians in San Diego lived, to a place where very few people lived, to a pretty cool neighborhood now. So here's some pictures. Mm -hmm. 